This is stoichiometry worksheet number three. Uh, we're going to take a look at problem number two, which reads, magnesium reacts with oxygen gas to produce magnesium oxide. Uh, before I look at my stoichiometry problem, I'm going, I need to write out and balance my equation. So it says magnesium reacts with oxygen gas. Magnesium is simply written as Mg. Um, it's not in a compound. It's not diatomic, so you can just leave it as Mg. It says it reacts with, so plus sign, oxygen gas. Oxygen is diatomic, so if you have one, you have it by itself, it's got to have a partner. It's got to have two of them. <clears throat> and it says it's going to produce magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is an ionic compound. Um, magnesium has an oxidation number of plus two. Oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. So when you crisscross, your final reduced chemical formula is MgO. But next, we need to reduce this problem. Because I have two oxygen on the reactant side, I need to have two oxygen on the product side. And I also need to have two more magnesium after I do that balancing. <coughs> All right. So let's move on to the stoichiometry part of the problem now that I have my balanced equation. It says, what mass of magnesium oxide is produced from four moles of magnesium? I am looking for, I'm looking for the mass of magnesium oxide. That is my final product needs to be the mass of magnesium oxide. And I'm starting with, I'm given four moles of magnesium. This type of stoichiometry, we call it mole to mass because we are given the moles and we are finding the mass. This is mole to mass stoichiometry. When I start writing out my equation, I'm always going to start with what I'm given. In this case, I'm given 4.00 moles of magnesium. Always make sure that you fully label everything in your equation. Uh, you not only need moles, you also need to know what uh, compound or what element you are dealing with. In this case, magnesium. All right, to go from moles of one substance to moles of another substance, you always have to use your mole ratio that comes from your balanced equation. I am going from moles of magnesium. I am looking for the moles of magnesium oxide. I need to find my moles of magnesium oxide before I can find my final mass. So I'm going to put the moles of magnesium from my equation. This number right there, my coefficient, tells me how many moles. I'm going to put that on the bottom of my next section so that these units can cancel out. So I'll have two moles of magnesium on the bottom. I am looking for magnesium oxide. So I'm going to put the moles of magnesium oxide, in this case, two moles of magnesium oxide on the top. Two moles of MgO. This unit is going to cancel out moles of magnesium. So we are no longer looking at moles of magnesium. We're looking at the moles of magnesium oxide. I'm not quite finished though. It's asking for the mass of magnesium oxide. So I need to find my molar mass of magnesium oxide. Uh, mag when you find that molar mass, you'll take the atomic mass of magnesium plus the atomic mass of oxygen. When you add them together, you should get 40 grams. 40 grams of MgO, that is my molar mass. The definition of a molar mass is that it's the mass of one mole of a compound. So I'm going to put one mole of magnesium oxide on the bottom. The reason it needs to be on the bottom is so that my units can cancel out. The only way I can cancel out units is if, if, is if I have one of the same unit on the top and on the bottom. So my one mole on the bottom cancels out the moles of magnesium oxide I was working with. My final unit then is listed for me here at the top. My final unit is grams of magnesium oxide, which matches what we were originally looking for in the problem. So now that I have this all figured out, I'm going to multiply the numbers across the top. That would be these three numbers, 4, 2, and 40. When I multiply those together, you get 320. And I'm going to multiply 2 and 1 together across the bottom to get 2. If I do this division, 320 divided by 2, you get 160. Um, make sure whenever you write your final answer, you always, always have to have a label. Uh, but before we do that, let's look at our number of sig figs. Your answer has to have the right number of sig figs. Look back into the original problem at the original number that they give you, which is 4.00. 
that number has three sig fig, so our answer must also have three sig fig. The easiest way to get 160 to have three sig fig is to simply add a decimal point at the very end. So my final answer is going to be 150 with the decimal point, and my unit is grams of magnesium oxide.